I am here with Mike Gonzalez, who is the writer of one of uh, two plays that we have in a double bill uh, next week at Orenmore, looking at uh, the armed forces and warfare. Hi Mike. Hi there. Uh, so your play is called Loyalty. It is. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about what's it about or where you got the inspiration? Well, um, the inspiration is because I've been writing, I've been uh, editing a book about um, about the relationship between social movement and the army. And it's, it's based around the question, of why do soldiers who come from working class backgrounds, who are poor, who are join the army, not because they want to get killed, but often as not, because it's a, it's a secure employment and, and they learn some skills. Yeah. Why when there's a massive uprising, for example, as in Egypt, why don't they not simply abandon the army and join their own people who are out in the streets? It's a very interesting question. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. And that led me to thinking, well, at what moment does a, does a young soldier who is, who is in some ways very enclosed and very isolated, the moment a soldier joins the army, they're isolated from their own people, they become part and they're very insistent upon that. If you look at the adverts and stuff, the army talks about the, the army is a kind of family, as a, as a group, as a peer group, as you're with your mates. They're always talking about you're with your mates and how you depend on each other. And they sort of forget the fact that you're out there killing people, usually in pursuit of an objective which doesn't really benefit the people who are doing the fighting and the dying. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They, do, they, do they need to do that, though, in order to in order to get the people to do absolutely, that? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. When you think about it, I mean, they're going into an unknown world, which is unfamiliar, threatening, uh, and and they're kept. It's kept like that because you can't ask people to go in there and face danger on behalf of who? On behalf of international oil companies or yeah, George exactly. Bush, and and ask them at the same time to die unless there's something holding them there. And loyalty is really about a, a play that asks the question: What? Ha at what point does somebody say enough? And what and can I'll, trigger that? Or what can trigger it? How does it happen? and why. Um, and so that's what it's about. It's a kind of modest, brief play about that. And and what is it to hold them there? And the answer's in the title. Yeah. Or at least that's the question. Of course, it's a very um, appropriate moment for these two plays to go on. Because in some ways, Paul's play addresses similar questions in a very different way. Yeah, yes. But the question, you know, this is, this is the, this is, you know, this is Remembrance Month. Yes. We're coming up on the 30th of November, there are poppies everywhere. And I personally feel very, very, very ambivalent about all of that. You know, I, I, do I want to celebrate heroes? I don't really want to celebrate the death of hundreds and thousands of young men yeah. for purposes which seem to me to be completely and wholly wrong mostly. They're not defending democracy really. They're certainly not defending democracy in Afghanistan or Iraq. You know, they're defending the lack of it. And, um, and so, it seems an appropriate moment to raise this question dramatically. Well, I think as well, there's a lot because of Armistice Day. There's a lot of stuff in the news as well at the moment about right. the armed forces and, and warfare. And there was an inter interesting thing on the radio this morning. I don't know if you heard about recruitment from the army, and they're not allowed now to mention that you're actually going out to kill people, and if like you're not allowed to mention that. And, uh, Is that right? I, I, well, I caught an advert. And, earlier this week on the television, an army uh, recruitment advert. I mean, it's very interesting, isn't it? First of all, these adverts go out during the day and not in the evening. That already tells you who they're addressing. Yeah. You know, unemployed young people, mostly men still, um, uh, who are going to be watching daytime television. That's the first thing. Because those adverts never show in the evening, yeah. right? And secondly, you know, they create this air, this sense of excitement. You know, there was that very, very famous poster from years back that said, you know, join the army, go, you know, meet, travel, go to interesting places, meet interesting people and kill them. <laughs> you know, it's a bit brutal, but it's not but, yeah. that far from the truth. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I wonder why it is that, you know, these young people don't, why don't they recognize the people they're, they're confronting as more like themselves than not, you know? Probably because there isn't a lot of interaction between them. There's none, yeah. I would think. So I mean, I think you know, they're very careful to regret them. I lived in a, uh, I was at university in, in, in Essex many, many, many moons ago, and, uh, well, not that long ago, but and it was, uh, Essex University was just outside Colchester, and Colchester is the most famous. It's the barracks where soldiers go before they're posted abroad. And the town 
was a town absolutely divided. There were the students who were seen as kind of aliens because uh, they lived outside and did yeah. strange hippie things and smoked yeah. dope and what have you. Then there were the soldiers and then there was the town. And for the town, the soldiers were a, a constant danger because, you know, these are young men who have just arrived from a tour abroad or just going. And they tend to be raucous, violent, fight, get drunk. And so you, you could, the, the, the town was a strange place. There was a kind of invisible frontier down the middle. So even here, there was a, separate. they were separated. Mm -hmm. And the separation's fundamental. Because, yeah. because you don't, on the whole, you don't feel able to, 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 to violate and or to attack someone you know, yeah. somebody who is human. So they have to be dehumanized yeah. both ways. And it struck me, you know, they are both the enemy is dehumanized as the enemy, a barbarian. Mm. And but the soldiers dehumanized too behind the uniform, which isolates, yeah. behind the masks and the helmets and the technology. Yeah, which I think is something, just to talk a little bit about um, Paul Laverty's play, Operation mm. Phantom Fury, which is the second yeah. play in Double Bill, that really addresses that Fantastic. idea of yeah, the humanity of and, and, and what it can do to you when you are uh -huh. actually trying to confront that afterwards. And, That's right. Yeah. I mean, you could almost see it as two chapters, couldn't you? Two yeah, alternative they, they, possibilities. They can, yeah. you, you, you stop and you look and you take off your goggles and you see the world as it really is. Or you don't, and and you're the instrument of something else, and then. Well, they both are, but at different points, and then what, what the damage then come, is. Come, yeah. the, come the terrible consequence. It's a very, very powerful, moving piece. Yeah, you know. yeah, it's beautifully written. They're both, yeah, I think. Uh -huh. Powerful. I think so. Yeah. Hard hitting, maybe, but but powerful. Yeah. But that's, that's what it is. But that's, that's what, what it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, in some ways, you know, you can kind of lengthy debates and conversation to one way of addressing things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you can find a moment that encapsulates, you know, some of the some of the drama, some of the dilemmas and some of the conflicts. Yes. Then that's what theatre can be wonderful and which it so often does here. Yeah. Well <laughs> brilliant. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure, as always.